Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. This is my top five three extremes short movies, short films. There's a series of short films called Three Extremes. There are two volumes of this series, which is a series of Asian cross-cultural trilogies of horror films uh, from accomplished indie directors, some of which have gone on to uh, do big things and are well-known directors like Takashi Miike, uh, like Park Chan-wook, and it's a series of films, so it will be a ranking of five, my top five favorite short films out of six. Obviously, two volumes of three films. Uh, it's an orig- The original title for the, f- the series uh, was called S- The Sam Gang, or Sam Gang. And what later became Three Extremes, Three Extremes 1 is technically Sam Gang 2. Uh, and Sam Gang 1 is technically extreme Three Extremes 2. Uh, so they kind of reversed, obviously. So the first, the Three Extremes 1 uh, are newer films by uh, some of which, one of which is Taka- Taka- yeah, Takashi Miike and uh, Park Chan-wook. Uh, and then the what is the sequel to that, Three Extremes 2, are actually films that were made uh, previous. So you can tell while watching these that the uh, Three Extremes 2 is they're clearly a little bit older, a little bit lower budget. Uh, but I enjoyed them. We are getting into October, which is going to be a month full of horror movie reviews. I will be doing more top fives on uh, ranking different horror genres and directors and horror movies. And I wanted to do an anthology series, and I might do some more horror anthology stuff later on another top five. But for this one, I wanted to do Three Extremes since I recently ranked Park Chan-wook's, uh, my top five favorite Park Chan-wook films. Uh, and since he was one of the directors in this anthology series, I thought it and the series had two volumes, so it had six films. So enough to do a top five. Uh, so with all that said, let's get into my top five favorite short films from the Three Extremes series. Starting off with number five, this is a movie that uh, was definitely creepy. Uh, the story was interesting, but, you know, there's something about it that didn't really excite me, right? Because these are horror movies, and it didn't really make me scared. It was definitely, like, it was interesting and kind of, like, visually striking and an interesting story. Uh, but it wasn't, it didn't really get me like these other ones did so coming in at number five is box directed by takashi Miike, uh, and this comes from extreme three three extremes one uh, this is a movie about uh, a writer who's having nightmares about when she was a kid a performer in like a circus and she was a contortionist along with i believe her sister maybe like a twin sister and her sister had kind of been played favor had some favoritism and there's a a situation where her sister died she feels responsible and she's having nightmares and uh, so a lot of this is kind of her having nightmares kind of a surreal telling of the story also s- some kind of disgusting you know child abuse in other ways uh going on as well so a very dark story uh visually this is a great story as well um kind of very simple in some ways yet uh you know i i enjoyed it i thought it was good i just didn't think it was very scary it didn't get me it didn't it didn't touch that that aspect of emotion for me uh but i did like it so you know all all five of these i really there's only one that i didn't really like so it was kind of easy to keep that one off, and we'll see which one that is. I'll talk about it at the end. But coming in at number five is Box, directed by Takashi Miike, which I need to go and watch more of his films, Japanese horror filmmaker. Uh, moving on to number four, 
This is a movie that was kind of confusing, but had very creepy elements to it. Like, this is a movie, because of its confusion, I had to look up to see what was going on in this movie. Uh, but it visually was amazing, definitely some creepy stuff. And once I, you know, read and, and discovered what the, the plot of this short film was, uh, I did appreciate it more. Uh, but because of that confusion, I had to knock it down a few times. But visually, it has some kind of horrific stuff. Uh, so coming in at number four is Memories, directed by Kim Ji-Woon from Three Extremes 2. I believe it's the first film of uh, Three Extremes 2. Uh, very dark movie, very creepy. It is a, a guy whose wife is missing, and he's having another, very, another thing similar to a uh, box he's having dreams uh, about his wife and then a woman wakes up on the streets and but nobody can like see her they're not like recognizing her and she's trying to remember how she got there and how to get home uh and it's so it's kind of these two stories storylines that are woven together uh and this guy who's having these nightmares uh is having these like brutal memories of his wife and how she like she does like b a lot of body horror kind of harm gory stuff uh which was definitely creepy and then the end how it ties it up uh i appreciate especially understanding getting the clarification of what happened how he was ultimately responsible for the reason why his wife isn't there and the character uh, that is confused and trying to find her way home is the ghost of his wife. And uh, which once it's framed in that way and, and it's understood, uh, it makes it even better. Uh, very creepy, uh, very, very like visually interesting, kind of similar in a lot of ways to Box. Uh, has similar stylized editing and visual type of things. Uh, so anyway, coming in at number four is Memories, directed by Kim Ji-Woon from Three Extremes 2. Let's take a little break from the show to promote I Have Inspired Disorder Plus. Would you feel good about donating $5 a month to an artist that you want to support? $5 a month is not much, less than a price of a cup of coffee at Starbucks. A lot of people would probably say, yeah, Inspired Disorder Plus, people can go, and for $5 a month or $50 for the year, you get access to all of the old podcasts that I've ever done, like 10 different podcasts hundreds of podcast episodes you also get access to like special deals so if you do want to collect my artwork you get discounts on stuff watch this show binge the full week ad free for five dollars a month like you get benefits for the five dollars a month or fifty dollars a year so it's not like you're just donating five dollars there's something you get something for that would you feel good about donating five dollars a month to an artist that you want to support a lot of people would probably say yeah head on over to inspireddisorder.com slash plus and become an Inspired Disorder Plus member today. And now let's get back to the show. Moving on to my third favorite short film from the Three Extremes anthology series. This is a movie that is super interesting story, has complexity to the story, this also very creepy. The, the scariness factor of this movie jumps up. The narrative of it, some confusing aspects, but still ultimately great. The end is like very interesting. Uh, so coming in at number three, like I really enjoyed this. Coming at number three is Going Home, directed by Peter Chan from Three Extremes 2. This movie is very creepy. This father-son move into what is an abandoned apartment building that is about to be destroyed. But they are down on their luck. They don't have a lot of money. So it's a financially uh, a situation that is good for them. Uh, it's a building that's only going to be around for another month and it's getting torn down. So most of the tenants have left. Uh, and uh, when this father and son and the kid is like six, maybe, 
maybe younger, young kid move in. Uh, they see this girl who also lives there that's even younger than the kid, very creepy. Uh, seemingly, this, this girl has no family with her, although there is across the way from their apartment building, which they're on, like, you know, the fifth or sixth story. It's like a giant apartment building. There is another tenant that still lives there with his disabled wife, and assumingly that little child belongs to that family. And just the setup and the premise of that is scary, like terrifying. The kid's scared because it's just like this hall. It's just like this abandoned apartment building. All these doors are open. Nobody's there. It's like in an area where just nobody lives. It is like the hollowed out carcass of a place that used to house hundreds of thousands of people. And the only people that are left is this weird guy who has his wife in a wheelchair. Uh, and then the kid goes missing. So the cop goes to the only other people that live there to see if their kids were playing together. Come to find out they don't have a kid. And they don't know what... But he, the, what he is doing is very creepy because we find out that his wife is actually dead. And that he's using Chinese medicine to revive her to bring her back from the dead which is insane but then the end of this movie there is another twist where seemingly what he was trying to do was effectively done already and he was just repeating the same process that had been done before and just as everything falls apart at the end of this movie it is like a little too little too late almost. Which just adds another layer. There's like layers of stories. There's a lot of different stories that are going on. It's not just about this kid that goes missing. Super interesting movie. Super creepy. And just like levels of, of darkness and things that make you... Uh, look at it from they they recontextualize what's going on they frame things in a different way the, your perspective changes and it's like ooh, like the very end of this movie is like holy shit right it was he was they were really going to do this thing supernatural kind of elements to it very scary uh and again great great end to the movie itself uh short film uh, so that movie being my third favorite, Going Home, directed by Peter Chan from uh, Three Extremes 2. Moving on to my second favorite short film from the Three Extremes anthology series of movies. This is a movie directed by one of my favorite directors, a director that I recently rewatched all of his films and I am a fan of all of his films. And this was probably the most unique of the three extreme films. Definitely a movie that had comedy, a lot of comedy in this one, dark comedy. Uh, but I appreciated that. And the fact that he's a great director visually, it's amazing. Super interesting way to tell this story as well. Uh, but coming in at number two is Cut, directed by Park Chan-wook himself. Uh, and this comes from... Three Extremes 1, the first Three Extremes films. And the premise of this is uh, the main character is a director, maybe similar to Park Chan-wook himself, and he is held hostage after a day of shooting, is kidnapped by somebody and held hostage by somebody that used to be an extra in many of his films. The director has no idea. It takes him a while to even recognize who this guy is. And this guy wants to get revenge on this director. Uh, and the director is assumingly a really nice guy, a really good guy. So it becomes a struggle to find things that make him bad. And he is faced with a situation where his wife, who is a piano player, is sitting in front of a grand piano uh, taken back to the set of the movie that he's filming at that is a replica of his actual home, which is a very gaudy kind of mansion type of a thing. 
So it looks the same as his home, which he like gets kidnapped from his home. And then he winds up back on the set that is modeled after his home. But his wife is sitting at the piano with piano strings tying her body to different points of the wall, almost like a like a say, you know, a, a disturbing like marionette. Uh, she's gagged and her fingers are glued to the keys. And then the director is bound by like a giant rubber band that stretches through the wall of the set uh, and tied to his back. So he can't actually get to her. He can't actually get to the guy that is kidnapped him. Uh, and then there's a third person involved, a child who is involved. Uh, and he is, there's comedic moments. There's, terrifying moments there's sad moments there's moments where he's trying to beg there's moments where he's trying to insult kind of shades of uh the main character of old boy kind of oscillating back and forth between trying to reason with and also attack the person who is controlling your fate uh but yeah, definitely some funny moments. It is kind of a surreal, very interesting kind of an idea, uh, you know, kind of revenge in some ways. Uh, it has a confusing end, which I didn't look up the end. It has a confusing end to it. There is a lot of moments in this film also because, you know, there's a lot of like um, repetition, right? Not only the the fact that the set that he's directing this movie on looks exactly like his home there's that that kind of repetition that mirroring there but there's like mirroring in like dialogue there's mirroring in like situations and it it adds to but also is kind of confusing in moments because things change and shift and i didn't look into the end of it but i enjoyed it i enjoyed the repetition the layers the performances uh, super interesting, super, I mean, obviously scary to be in that moment to have a guy who's like going to punish you for being a good person. Like, it's not like he even had, I mean, I guess he knew that they were cheating on each other, but the, he didn't have like major dirt on him. He just didn't like the fact that he was only ever, uh, an extra and, this guy was just a good guy and why should he deserve all these good things while this extra is like struggling in poverty uh so interesting movie uh i wanted to put it at number one but ultimately it wasn't the creepiest there is one that is a clear and present number one and uh because cut was so interesting so different than all of them i mean it's like it's vibrant it has a vibrance to it that that none of the other ones did and is still able to have that kind of creepiness and scariness that the other ones have as well uh that i put it at number two and i'm just a big fan of park chan Wook too i i like it has fun camera work it, he's like clearly like you can see as a director watching cut that he is i mean i guess similarly to uh, Takashi Miike where there is like a confidence in the way they direct these films that makes them stylize and stand out it's clear that they have a voice in directing their movies uh, and uh, I like Park Chan-wook's voice I, I really do enjoy it uh, but coming in at number two is Cut directed by Park Chan-wook from Three Extremes Let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces. That's right. I am also an artist. I do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces. A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at InspiredDisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images head on over to inspireddisorder.com buy original art buy prints if that's your jam if you want eight by ten prints on high quality paper also if you're looking to wear some art there are shirts available with original artwork by myself select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form you go to inspireddisorder.com you buy original artwork 
you buy prints, you buy shirts, you're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available for select faces. Go to InspiredDisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show. Moving on to my favorite short film from the three extremes anthology series of films. My number one, my favorite, and this is the uh, this is the only one, only short film out of all of these short films that was actually added to. They actually filmed more and were able to release as a full theatrical film, which I didn't realize until after I had watched these, and I might have to go back and watch what is the extended version from a 45-minute film to an hour 45 uh, because it was disturbing, it was interesting, like, I, like, it was the most impactful and the most, like, it got me. This is the one that got me. Super interesting story. And, like, the way it's all constructed and, and like, kind of goes through and the more you learn, the more disturbing it is. Uh, it had to be my number one. And I think it's actually the first short film in Three Extremes, the first three extremes and that movie coming in at number one is dumplings by fruit chan i believe is how you say his name uh dumplings is gnarly this is gnarly the idea is that there's this woman who makes dumplings that revitalize your looks are able to regress make you look younger maintain your healthy young skin and young looking self and there is an aging actress who is desperate to look younger and feel younger and she goes to this woman who makes dumplings and starts to eat them even though they are painful to eat and we find out while why they are painful to eat because let's just say this woman that makes dumplings also performs abortions and the mystery ingredient helps to make you look youthful. Yeah. So spoilers. <laughs> this is a crazy short film. And it even goes further than that. Like there's, there's a lot to that idea. Right? Which there's already conspiracy theories that like wealthy people like drink children's blood or the idea of eating baby fetuses and stuff like that whatever so it's kind of playing on those already existing conspiracy theories and wacky ideas but how they forgive the term flesh it out is amazing what happens with this lady that's an actress that's so desperate to look younger i mean it has that that aspect of it where it's like how women will what lengths women will go to to maintain their youth to maintain their beauty is kind of insane on its own you know all of the procedures and maintenance and things i mean one the fact that they kind of have to because society is so messed up that women are only valued because of their beauty which is a kind of a shitty idea to begin with but the lengths at which women will go to try and maintain that beauty because society is set up in that way in reality is like the makeups the creams the procedures everything that happens is crazy so this kind of takes that idea cranks it up it also takes the kind of the idea of abortions uh and it's it's basically a, part of this movie is what conservatives in america think liberals do like, i could see them watching this and being like see this is a documentary this is exactly what they do um so it's got like all of those things but the way this goes how it ends like the length to which this woman who is getting the effects but even the effects are like bad like there's a dinner scene where like she smells bad and it's like side effects from dumplings that she ate. 
and she thinks that maybe the meat was like rotten. They find out that that was like from uh, like was a product of incest. Which isn't even the darkest aspect of where this short film goes. I don't want to spoil it. But it keeps going darker. And for a film series that's called Three Extremes, this film goes extreme. It is by far, makes sense that they fleshed it out, pardon the pun, into a full narrative film. I am excited just thinking about it to watch and see the performances are great uh the idea is insane uh but i i actually love it i great premise it has like so many interesting themes super dark super dark uh but i i'm excited to see the full length version which all of these are available for free on tubi right now so if you want to watch three extremes one and two they are on tubi the theatrical version the long extended version of dumplings is available on tubi so there will be ads which is kind of a bummer when you're in the zone of a horror film of a crazy film and then oh there's a cell phone commercial oh this is how you get credit cards uh that's kind of a bummer but other than that it's a it, great series of films i absolutely love them and dumplings knocked it out of the park i think it was by far the most the most like just like brutal of the films uh and the one film that didn't make it it was a taiwanese film uh directed by nanzi nibarutu nibaritur uh the wheel which is about like possessed puppets it was okay but no wasn't wasn't scary performances weren't the greatest uh, there was aspects of it where it just wasn't great, where the rest of these, I really did enjoy all five of these. Uh, they were all great, and uh, let me do that one more time. One more time, let's go through. This is my top five, three extremes, short films. No, let me phrase that. This is my top five... This is my top five short films from the Three Extremes anthology series. Starting off with number five is Box, directed by Takashi Miike. Number four is Memories, directed by Kim Jean Woon. Number three is Going Home, directed by Peter Chan. Number two is Cut, directed by Park Chan Wook. And my number one favorite short film from the Three Extremes anthology series is Dumpling, directed by Fruit Chan. I highly recommend checking out the Three Extremes series, Volume 1 and Volume 2. A uh, very good horror film anthology series to kick off October and get you ready for Halloween. Uh, let me know how you would rank the Three Extremes short films. Uh, I would love to know, would love to hear your thoughts on them. And let me know if you've seen Dumpling, the full theatrical version. I would love to do that as well. Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on social media. I would love to hear it. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring.